Welcome to Free Beer Friday, powered in part by Classic of Denton. Well, guys, welcome to Free Beer Friday. I'm Ben, your host from the Bearded Monk. Guess who's with me tonight? It's Wim Benz from Lakewood Brewing. That's it's right. Me. He's a real person. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I've been joking because you guys have gotten so big that your time is just, it's all over the place. Like, you've got to run this, well, I say monster brewery. We were talking about this earlier. It's, it's not, not a monster brewery. It's not a monster brewery. It's not even close it's, to being a monster brewery. You guys are so successful that your time is very precious. So, What is that supposed to mean? You're, you've got a lot to do. Oh. Yeah. I mean, you're precious as well. Very much so. You guys have gotten Very real big, so. and it's about to end. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Not like it's the end of days. Yes. No. Just that you've got so much going on, man. It's busy. Everybody. Everybody yeah. wants a piece of Lakewood. It's a busy time in the beer industry. That's, yeah. right. <laughs> That's right. All right. Yeah. So how are things going? Good. Yeah? Good. You're rocking and rolling Making a lot of beer. We've got, uh, okay, so one that most folks will know. Mm -hmm. We know Temptress. Yes. Right? That's the one that we're kind of. Known for that's the, it's, they, it's s most people know Temptress before they know Lakewood Brewing Company. Really, you'd be like, "What do you do? I work for Lakewood Brewing Company. What kind of beer? What beer do you guys make? You ever heard of Temptress? Oh, Temptress! It's like my favorite beer. <laughs> I drink it all the time. All right, and this monstrous lady has got some variants that come out seasonally. She has some sisters. Yes. All yeah. right. So what? Let, go through the list. Okay. So, what's well, changing? Because this year, right? This year, yeah. yeah this year, okay. uh, last week, this week. Well, do you want to start earlier this year? Right. So yeah. in uh, in January, we release Raspberry Temptress. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Let's back up. Let's talk about Temptress first. Okay. For, for the uneducated. Okay. So the base beer for the un uninducted, yep. un no un yeah. understudy. No. Temptress is a fantastic <laughs> beer. Temptress is a is, is a nine percent imperial milk stout. <laughs> um, it's. It's uh, it's like, you know, it's funny. We we let me tell you a little story, story time. Uh oh. Story uh, time. When we first down, when we first started when we Get first started the brewery, the first time that we ever had sort of all of our beers together, um, was at Brew Riot in Bishop Arts, and that was Temptress. It was what turned into Rock Rider and what turned into Hop Trap. Right so on. we had an IPA, we had a wheat, and we had our Imperial Milk Stout. Mm -hmm. And it was mid, late May, hot and sticky, like the stupid hot and sticky Texas weather, you know. Yeah. And um, we're like, okay, well, the, the wheat beer is going to go over really well with the ladies. And then the IPA will kind of be for everybody. And then the stout, well, the stout is for guys that, you know, look like you. Right? Okay. Guys with that's fair. Boys with beards, These right? Big fuzzy guys. Yeah. That want big fuzzy guys because it's a big stout. A big boozy stout. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. So, we kick off the day. Everything's going great. We're sampling people and uh, having a ton of fun. And um, um, you know, people would come up and say, you know, it, it's usually what happens at a at any beer event if somebody's not all that into beer or new to craft beer. Hi, what do you guys got? Well, we have this, this, and this. Okay, well, I don't really know what I want. Okay, well, what do you normally drink? Mm -hmm. This kind of where we start. Um, well, you know, I drink ABC beer, usually a American light lager. Mm -hmm. um, easy drinking. E <laughs> easy drinking. Summer drinker. Easy drinking, yeah. mass produced. Um, but we're like, hey, let's start, you know, we're, we are in the business of, of pushing boundaries and pushing what beer can be. And... In order to get people on board, we need to push their comfort zone. You know, push them out of their comfort zone. Right on. I drink American Light Lager. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you drink this beer? It's 9%, which is <laughs> double what you're used to. It's black as night, which you're not used to. And it tastes like chocolate cake, which you're also not used to. Okay. Sometimes it's a hit. Sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. more, than not more, more than not, it's a hit. It's great beer. So we start yeah. do we start doing that at the festival. We had some women try the beer. They start talking. Next thing we know is we have a line from here to wherever, just for just for temptress, temptress. and it's all women, not fuzzy bearded guys. Interesting. So at that point, we're like, okay, what? 
We might be onto something because mm-hmm. Temptress was never intended to be a year-round beer. Temptress was intended to be our, our winter seasonal. Really? Because it's a big yeah, beer. Yeah. It's really hard not to swear when you're talking about beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long show. I okay, I believe in you. Come on, <laughs> do this one. <laughs> I'm gonna get outside and be like. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, so here so, you so, are. Yeah, so here we are. And wildly we have, popular. We have this wildly popular 9% beer. Milk so we, uh, it wasn't the first beer we released. So we released our, um, we started building the brewery in 2011-ish, 2012. Mm-hmm. We got the building in 12. We start, we ordered equipment in 11. So got the building in 12, finished all that stuff up, and um, uh, released our first two beers August 4th of 2012, and that's our anniversary. So we mm-hmm. just celebrated our five-year anniversary. Congratulations With on thanks. the birthday, by the way. Yeah, uh, We're starting kindergarten. It's very, very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> so the first two beers that we released were Rock Rider and Hop Trap. Mm-hmm. After that, uh, we released, I think we released Temptress right after that, and then Lager very shortly after that. Mm-hmm. So we had four, the core four, sort of our first, our first go-around. So the first iteration of a non-base Temptress variant was bourbon barrel-aged Temptress. Okay. So we, re- we realized that Temptress was going to be a year-round beer right off the bat after, you know, the success it had at festivals and tastings. and Before you ever opened. Before we ever opened. Yeah. And um, we brewed our first batch of Temptress, and it didn't go quite like we wanted it to go. Uh. New system, scaling up. Um... We ended up with a beer that was around 8%, not 9%. And, you know, it says 9 on the bottle. You want to give them 9. Mm-hmm. So it was still a good beer, but it wasn't what we wanted to the, the, first, um, the first round of Temptress to taste like because it wasn't, we didn't hit our number. So we're like, well, we, you know, we're a tiny little brewery. We just brewed this batch of beer. It costs a ton of money to brew that beer because there's Can't so much malt in it. it Can't just throw it away. What do we do? I guess we can put it in a barrel. All right. So we got 12 barrels. It's not a lot. Mm. 12, 12 barrels. One of those filled, them up. Up, filled them all up and let them sit for about four or five months. And then we released Bourbon Barrel Temptress 2012 version for the very first time in 2012. And people just went ape poop for it. I was trying to figure out how to yeah. say that one, too. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh <laughs> They, uh, yeah, they really just threw their yeah poop against the. No. <laughs> I didn't. I, Don't I associate didn't. that with the beer. No. Don't do that. Don't do that. No. But the demand for said beer. But was that threw the people roof. just went bananas for it. Yeah. Right. You like that bananas? Oh, I like that monkeys. Yeah. Um. Although apes are not monkeys. Oh, we're gonna monkeys have to get into that. We'll get into that. It's show. all about the tail. Yeah. Although Come back for the zoological show. A mandrel with is considered <laughs> an ape, even though it does have a tail. Or oh, it's considered a monkey, even though it does not have a tail. Don't that's look at that's me. what it is. It's I a monkey, know. even though it doesn't have it. It's it's the largest monkey. Oh, gotcha. Look gotcha. it up. It's okay. it's a real deal. A mandrel. So a mandrel, the one with the blue face, you know, the big teeth and the blue. What butt. I don't. They got blue butts. What? Blue and red. They look like painted faces. Okay. It's a mandrel. Okay. There it is. It's a thing. Blue and red? We go to the zoo a lot. Blue and red? Blue and red. Um, sometimes green. So we released... <laughs> bur- <laughs> back to the show. <laughs> so we released Bourbon Barrel Temptress for the first time in 2012. Got a huge following. Put us on the map. Everyone was just going bananas over Temptress. Um, the following year, uh, we did our first Halloween party. It's called Let's Get Weird. Right on. Um, right we, do, on. we do Let's Get Weird every single year. Last year, we had... Um, we had a woman hanging from silks uh, off of a thirty-foot ceiling in the brewery. We had a guy on stilts. Was a it was it was a party. fun, yeah. fun party. We're gonna we're gonna do something uh, uh, coming up real soon. Coming up real soon. Yeah, um, we're not gonna do it like the day before Halloween because we realized that a lot of people want to spend time with their kids. Yeah, go. That's part them. of it. So yeah. it's gonna be the weekend before. Okay. So you get that's. I think Denton has done that well. Like yeah. The bars generally do the weekend before. And then, uh, like, Day of the Dead Fest is the weekend before. And yeah. 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 So, like, I, I endorse that. Tons yeah. of fun. Um, so, at that one, we were like, hey, let's do a bunch of, bunch of casks, a bunch of firkins. 
And we did all different kinds. We did we did mole with mm. actual mole mm. with chicken. <laughs> we went to our local Mexican food place right up the street from us that we go to all the time. And uh, we're like, hey, uh, can we can we get like a cup of mole? <laughs> and we are talking about variants on variants on temptress. temptress. So you take on you this stout we're talking you about. You take the base beer temptress and then you add something to it. Yeah, and that's called our seduction series. So I'm, so I'm t- telling you how no, how we got right. there. So we first we started with Firkins. Uh, we did three versions of Captain Crunch. Mm, nice. Um, mm. Those were actually not Does bad. I want to see that one. Not bad. Captain Crunch. Captain Temptress? Crunch. Temptress. Captain Temptress. We did we did raspberry and we did mole, with chicken and nuts. <laughs> not chicken nuts. Chicken that's kind of <laughs> different. Yeah, I'm with you. Because they don't have nuts. <laughs> that's a rooster. Oh. So come on, guys. Keeping it PG, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we did that. Mole. Eh, you know, we kind of got some of the flavor in there, but the head retention was just because <laughs> it <laughs> just had fat floating on top of it. Oh wow. It wasn't you know? But we made you know ten gallons of it. So something to play with. Ah, forget about it. Fair enough. So, um, but we're like, hey, Temptress goes really well with different flavors. So the next year, in 13, we, uh, we did a 30-barrel batch, a single batch mm-hmm. of, of the variants. And we did, we did raspberry. We did, <laughs> we did raspberry. Mm-hmm. We did mole. Mole was a ton of fun. We cleared out all the Mexican mercados around our, uh, around our little brewery uh, of all the peppers. We <laughs> hand, and this, I mean, the man hours that went into that first batch, were just insane. Just a mess. Yeah. And yeah. and there was just, you know, pepper. It was all dried peppers. <laughs> Pasilla, guajillo, ancho, and chipotle. Dried peppers. So we deveined them, stemmed them. Dried peppers. <sighs> it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot for 30 barrels. <laughs> um, but it turned out great. You know, it turned out really cool. And then we did French Quarter, which we still do. French Quarter is... Um, uh, local uh, coffee roaster that we work with, Noble Coyote Coffee Roasting. Mm-hmm. And they roast up some really fantastic fair trade coffee. But what we do with that is they don't, they don't just give us coffee mm-hmm. and say, here, put the coffee in the beer. We give them a bourbon barrel. They take green, <laughs> they take green coffee, the c- green coffee beans, uh-huh. put that in the bourbon barrel for a couple of months. The green coffee absorbs the flavors of whatever it's around. Then they roast it. Then we put it in the beer. Oh, that's so good. So it's bourbon barrel aged coffee beans that in. are then roasted and then put into, just to give it, I mean, just why not? Right. It's wonderful. Can you Such taste it? It's a delightful beer. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but Definitely comes off why not? coffee. Why yeah. not, right? There you go. <laughs> uh, and then because it's French Quarter, we add a little bit of chicory. And I'm talking... Oh, so in a in, little bit of in a whole in a whole freaking fermentation tank, just you know. per keg. There's probably ten grams of oh wow chicory. I mean, oh, it's okay. a very yeah, minuscule so amount. Very little it's, bit. it's strong stuff, so you know, a little goes a long way. Um, but it's you know, coffee wise, we put pounds and pounds of coffee in it. So right on, yeah. God, so we did that. Delightful version. And then uh, the last, last but not least, is uh, Sinmint Temptress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is, um, which basically tastes like a thin mint cookie. It's about Girl Scout cookie, liquefied alcoholic yep. Girl Scout cookie. We uh, we yep. thought about calling calling it the Girl Stout for a while. Oh, that was mm-hmm. one of the working names. Um, yeah, but we 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 thought the branding the would girls, be a little the Girl Scouts might get a little. Yeah, that's fair. Because it would have been like fair. the temptress silhouette with like a sash <laughs> of badge, <laughs> We're like, uh, yeah, okay. drinking and. And child's five, organization. Five to ten year olds. Yeah, no, that, that doesn't out. work. That but work the out. cookie. Sidman has worked the out. The cookie has no age. Nice. Um, I like that. The cookie is ageless. So <laughs> we made cinnamon, which is mint and graham cracker. Mm. And it just it's like drinking a liquid, boozy chocolate cookie. Yeah. It's that fantastic. thing is beautiful. So Absolutely new this beautiful. year. New this year. <gasps> Came out. Came like out this week. This week. This week. It's Coconut Temptress. Oh. For she the first so time, good. she is so good. Yeah, she's so good. By the way, did you see Ben Webster's art for that tonight? No. Oh, 
Yeah, she's up on the wall right now. And it's her her um, grass skirt is spread out, and uh, she's sitting on the edge of a coconut holding oh, nice. her glass. Yeah, I wish we had branding right now to show of the Temptress. Of, of coconut? Oh, we do have Temptress. Yeah. So the, the Temptress on all the labels, she's holding yeah. up. She's sitting cross-legged holding up her glass. Yeah. And then every variant is she's a classy gal. thematic she's to a classy gal. who yeah. she is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, so anyway so now we've got coconut this that's year. That's the seduction series. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Well, I think a lot that's of people love Temptress it. Temptress and her sister clones. And her sisters. I like that. And her sister. Yeah. And then this year, starting back in February, well, no, starting in March, mm -hmm. you moved on from just doing bourbon barrel-aged Temptress in the winter, yeah. which is delightful. Which is the whale. You started the white whale. bourbon barrel-aging each variant. We started barrel aging each variant. Okay. Not necessarily bourbon. Not so all. Not all of them will be bourbon. Okay. Okay. This year they. This year the majority of them are, are bourbon. Okay. Um, because we wanted to just kind of seed that. I mean, it was a very small amount. It was a thirty barrel batch. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just kind of went. We took a step back and we said, okay, well now we're making you know larger amounts of seduction series. Well, what happens if we put each of these seduction series in a barrel? Right on. So let's start with. Let's start with a, a single batch, see how it goes. And it goes good. Yeah. It goes real good. So far, it's been delightful. Yeah. Absolutely delightful. Because it's like bourbon barrel temptress with raspberry, with spices, with, with coffee. coffee, with mint. With mint and graham cracker. Oh, God. That's going to be so good, guys. Does not suck. So good. Does not suck. Um, We're not going to see coconut. barrel aged coconut this year. You will year. not. We'll see it next year. Can we find that at the brewery? At all? No. Over the next? No, not at all. It's gone. Well, it never happened. But, uh, I mean, you you guys used up all the coconut tintress. Is yes. That the case? Yes. Oh, that makes me so sad. So we've got to yes. wait until, what, 2019? No, 2018. Next 2018? year. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, next so year. There, okay, so there's And hopes. then next year we're going to we're gonna – Shake up when the when the temptresses release. Okay, we're gonna shake okay. up our release schedule a little bit to kind of coincide with um, with the season a little bit better. Right on. Yeah, yeah. This year we we saw coffee a little earlier off of fall. It, it made it a great fall drink. Right. Little little toasty for well mid summer. The, the the reason for releasing uh, French Quarter mm -hmm. in the summer is it's halfway to Mardi Gras. So we kind of oh, we kind of nice. call it our midi midi gras. Oh, I like that. I like that. For, there you go. For what that's worth. Celebrate midi gras. Um, yeah, with but French next Quarter year Tintress. it might come out a little closer to the actual Mardi Gras. Okay, right on. Yeah, right on. Right so on. we're kind of shaking it up a little bit. Okay. Well, should we know about Temptress? Yep. Do we want to talk about this delightful little tree? We can talk about alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Alcohol is fantastic. Um, there it is. Am I holding that? Alcohol up right? is for <laughs> alcohol is alcohol is a beer for people who are. Very new to craft beer. I got a problem. You do. Yeah. I'll sustain. Anyway. Yeah. Easy it's a great drinking. beer. So yeah. so this is a fun story, too. When we were um, literally in the trenches, we were digging trench drains in the brewery. Okay. And, you know, they've we've we've cut the the slab and, you know, we've gotten all the pieces out and it's it's literally being dug out. Um, it, we don't have any equipment in the brewery yet. I mean, it's it's just a construction mess. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the local cops stopped in, and we're like, "Oh snap! <laughs> hi, 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 <laughs> officer. <laughs> um, what's up? We're what are you guys doing? Uh, we're building a brewery. <laughs> I mean, and I don't know why we were even concerned about it. You know." I've done nothing We're wrong. We're supposed to be here. I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> I have a license to do what I'm doing. But still, when a cop walks in in full uniform, you kind of go, it's an air of authority there. Hello, sir. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he was great. Um, big craft beer fan. Was very excited that we were opening a brewery on his beat. Nice. And, uh, yeah, he was like, well, this is great. You know, we'll, I'll have to. You know, we'll have to patrol the neighborhood a little more and, you know, make sure. That <laughs> I was like, great. This is awesome. <laughs> so fr from that point on, we, we started 
we, we, we've had a really great relationship with um, the Garland Police Department. And in, in particular, the SWAT team. Nice. Because they're... Yeah. That's awesome. When you're a, when you're a BA brewery, <laughs> you got to be friends with the BA. <laughs> that's true. It's bad. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Like good, BA good Baracus? Sensory. Yeah, okay. Like no, the A team? Yeah. The yeah, BA yeah. stands for something. Oh. It's not Brandon Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wait, it's not? No. Oh. Check his wallet. Oh. It's the one that says BA. MF. <laughs> I'm so impressed at your censoring right now. This is fantastic. I'm trying so hard. I'm so proud of you. Oh, my. I'm so proud of you. Oh, my butt's sweating so bad. <laughs> it's got to come out so Okay. So you started hanging out with So we started Girl hanging out with SWAT. the cops. Yeah, I started hanging out with the cops, and they're, they've, been, they've been fantastic. The whole city's really been fantastic. Um, and um, so uh, we started hanging out with uh, um, Dave Swaby. Who was the? Can you? Oh, sorry. Did I get too far away. Thanks. <laughs> <sighs> so we we started hanging out with Dave Swavey, who's mm-hmm. the head of the Guns and Hoses Foundation, and that's that little right little uh, logo here. Right there. So yeah. Guns and Hoses is um is a really cool organization, um and what they do is they provide financial assistance to families of fallen first responders, right? Um. And, you know, I, I know in the political climate that we're in, police is a little bit of a touchy subject, but this helps families. Right? Yeah. These are this helps families of, of people who, who pay the ultimate sacrifice. These are men and women that have yeah. been out there. The people that are running towards the fire. Serving other people. Absolutely. Yeah. Who Absolutely. have lost their lives. So yeah. it made sense for us. You know, our, our brewery is, is based on family, community creativity and we creatively came up with this beer that we knew had to appeal to cops and firefighters and cops and firefighters aren't necessarily the biggest craft beer drinkers so we had to come up with a beer that was going to be approachable and going to be a good gateway beer okay you know to get get into craft trying trying something that's a lot lighter right easy drink so if you you pour this into a glass it's crystal clear it's yellow it's 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 going to it's not going to put you off right away and go oh well that's too dark. This is not temptress. This is not yeah. temptress. <laughs> no, this is a Kolsch. So a Kolsch is uh, a German style beer, um, and it's an ale that's that's fermented at a colder temperature. So you get lager type of characteristics. Um, so you get a crispness, a clean fermentation. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a it's just a really good drink of beer for people who don't can't wrap their head around Kolsch. It's a German blonde. Oh, I like that. Okay, yeah, boom, easy. plain and simple. Yeah, easy drinking beer. A German blonde. Easy drinking beer. It's good beer for a good cause. Right on. And that's it. Right on. That's it, dude. You guys are moving some of this beer. I know we're. Yeah, we've got a constant tap on of this beer. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. That's an easy drink. Yeah, one. and it's, uh, you know, proceeds from uh, alcohol go to help the Guns and Hoses Foundation, which in turn goes to help families of first Fall responders in North, in North Texas. Right on. Right and on. then in Austin, no, thank you for in Austin, it helps the 100 Club of Central Texas. I don't know what that is. Similar organization. Okay. Um, so the proceeds from the sales there go to benefit the local organization there. Right on. Yeah. That's very cool. Very cool. Well, and you mentioned all, okay, so you're up here. Yep. I most people have probably seen some of your beers around DFW. You're also in Austin. We're in Austin a little yep. bit. Right yep. on, right on. Austin, uh, College Station, Brian, Tyler, Abilene, Amarillo, Lubbock, Wichita stuff else? And DFW. There we go. Nice. Nice. Ninety percent of what we sell is in DFW. So. That's uh, this is a pretty big area, and yeah. a lot of us know who you are yeah. in this area. Right on, yeah. right on. So what? What's coming up next? I mean, I know we just talked about coconut temptress. I know we we, I, we got that now. We're drinking. Oh yeah. yeah. So by the way, tonight coconut, coconut temptress is out. Uh, Lion Share Five is out. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. So tonight, yeah, we've tapped in bourbon barrel aged. 
right? Mm -hmm. French, French Quarter, Quarter Temptress. Yep. The new Coconut Temptress. Yippers. And Lion Share 5. And Lion Share 5. That was not tapped before we left, and I could not keep the bottles in stock. I still haven't even tried it. It is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about this? So this Lion Share 5 is a <sighs> sc uh, Scotch Ale? It's not a Scotch Ale. It is no? a Scottish Ale. Okay, wait. What's the difference? Don't catch me lying. <laughs> okay, fair enough. It is a delicious it's like, beer. It's the difference between a 30 sh a shilling, and a 50 shilling, and a 60 shilling. <laughs> it's like, oh, come on. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, it, is it is a, a Scottish it is ale. It is a Scottish ale aged in scotch barrels and bourbon barrels. Oh, okay. I thought it was just scotch barrels. It was not just scotch. So it's a blend. Uh, the problem with getting barrels from the other side of the world is that not all of them make it. Uh, wait, um, do they just show up as a pile of staves? Is that what they, happens? They they show up in different states of disrepair uh. or quality. We we had to throw out half of the barrels that came. <gasps> you just threw them away? Well, we sold them for like fifty bucks. Okay, nice. Yeah, delicious. They delicious they went wood. to they went to they went to good homes. Crafters and lovers and the. I the barrels that don't make it go I would to the barrel farm walk where they <laughs> run and run with other barrels. <laughs> they run free. They run free. They get to eat all the scotch they want. Oh. <laughs> it's a wonderful life for I them. Would, I would just walk around licking barrel staves if that were a, Please an opportunity. That. No? Just charred barrel no, you staves? Don't wanna, you don't want to do that. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right. So anyway. Yeah. This one was so aged in both. In both. And then <laughs> in both. But a scotch barrel... Starts its life as a bourbon barrel. Okay. So when, um, so is a bourbon or a whiskey barrel? Either one. Okay. Well, bourbons for bourbons, four whiskeys four. Years. Okay. The difference between uh, whiskey yeah. and bourbon is the is the malt bill. Never mind. I thought it was just region. Continue. Yeah. Continue no, it's on, not. sir. It's, uh, it's the malt bill. Um, that's why Witherspoon Distilling out here in Louisville, mm -hmm. close by, makes bourbon. I don't know how I feel about those hacks over there. No. Their spoon brewing. <laughs> we use a lot of their barrels. <laughs> they're pretty they're pretty delicious. Actually, we could start going down the like the three fates line too, couldn't we, on the legendary series? Yeah, we could. Yeah. But let's let's keep talking yeah. about barrels though. So and I love you, Chris Lurie. So Continue. they <laughs> So they start they start as they start as bourbon barrels. <laughs> by by law you cannot um you cannot age whiskey or bourbon and obviously I'm not the expert on this. Anyway, it's four years, they're one and done. After that, they go to Home Depot to become planters, oh, or of they go yes. to Mexico to be filled with tequila, mm -hmm. or they go to the Caribbean to be filled with rum, or they go to Scotland to be filled with scotch. Gotcha. Or Irish whiskey in Ireland. Okay. So they have a second life. Um, and then when they're done with it, it comes back to us. But some of those scotch barrels can be sitting for 12, 13 years. Wow. Or longer, right? Nice. Well, or and they're already, yeah, at we least start getting they're already at least four years old because. 25 Highland barrels. and Right. So yeah. by the time some of these barrels come to us, especially if, 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 it's, a, if it's a secondary whiskey barrel, mm -hmm. like a scotch barrel, a tequila barrel, or a um, rum barrel, mm -hmm. I mean, those barrels can be 20, 30 years old. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yep. And then we use them, and then we shuffle them off into the masses. So. We uh, we send them off to the barrel farms. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I have a barrel speaker, a barrel bike, a yeah, b a barrel table. Exactly. Yeah. Everything made of barrels. <laughs> we made a barrel. We made a barrel wall in the brewery. Yeah. It's a big wall, and it took surprisingly not very many barrels. Because <laughs> when you when you unroll a, a barrel, thing. that's a lot of surface yeah. area. Yeah. 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 These things are huge. If you've never seen a barrel, I mean, it's... They're pretty big. Uh, we're talking like this area of the table. Yeah. yeah this, and these are big they're units. They're about three, yeah. three and a half feet tall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then so, we have wine barrels, too. Uh, we do a lot of stuff in wine barrels. Uh, they're bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, they're 59 gallons. A um, 59 gallons. Yeah. 59 gallons of gallons. alcohol. Yeah. Go, or, go or to your fridge and look at that gallon of milk. Yeah. Go ahead. And there's We're waiting. There's yeah. 59 of them. Now, stack that 59 times. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot of liquid. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so anyway. It's a lot of volume. 
So yeah, so we do uh, we do a bunch of stuff with barrels. Right on, right yeah. on. Yeah, you guys. I think we have you have I a whole barrel house. I think we have one of the larger barrel programs in the state of Texas. Right on. If not, in well, yeah. I don't want to. We need to start to my horn too hard. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think in Texas we are, we definitely are the leader in um, doing a lot of things with barrels and a lot of different barrels. We have absinthe barrels. Really? Yeah. What are that Hard those? to come by. We have two of them. <laughs> we have of two. All the barrels in that place you of got. The f- of the 400-plus barrels that we have, we have two absent. Nice. Two absent nice. barrels. Hard to come by. Well, and so I was looking back. When I was posting pictures about tonight, yep. I I found that shot that Rassie took of us talking after the one year. We were in the old tap room yeah. that's now like a rentable meeting room. It's our it employee was, break room. It's a it's a and break also, room and now. also a fantastic area for corporate functions. There you go. Parties. I mean, it's a beautiful Weddings. area. It's great. Get, it's wonderful. Check it's it out. It's great. Check we it have out. we have a lot of, we have a lot of really cool spaces to rent. Yeah. At the brewery. No, for uh, all kinds of stuff. Since then, since you were in that one building. Yep. How many more buildings do you own on that street now? <laughs> we lease everything. Uh, How many have, more buildings do you occupy do down we that occupy? street? <laughs> uh, so we have our packaging building. We have well, we have our original brewery. We have the addition to the brewery. We have our packaging building. We have our uh, facilities and uh, clean barrel storage. Okay. And then we have our sour barrel storage. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Let's go dig through that clean barrel storage. That sounds pretty. Clean barrel? Yeah. You don't want to go to the sour room? No, I just want to carry those around. Oh. Yeah, that'd be fun. They're 50, they weigh a lot. They I weigh know. 500 pounds. Oh, well, no, I guess I've never carried one around that's got liquid in it. Yeah. I've five, rolled other ones around. 500 pounds. That's amazing, guys. Yeah. 500 pounds of you, liquid. You don't want that to fall on your foot. Yeah, that's fair. That's no. fair. Hence the uh, steel toe boots. Hence t- steel shoes. Nice. Steel shoes. Steel shoes. Steel shoes. Steel shoes. Steel shoes. Oh, man. Okay, so we had, we had inked on to... The Legendary Series. Legendary Series. Yes. So, who are the three fates that we're in the midst of right now? Because we're, we're about to see Numero Trace. Maybe. Maybe. <gasps> okay. Let's we'll start with last year. Who last did we year. see? So, we saw Thread Spinner first. Mm-hmm. Thread Spinner was a American barley wine aged in bourbon barrels. Witherspoon bourbon barrels. I love you, Chris. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, Grand Allowance. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Was number two. The wheat one. Was the wheat wine mm-hmm. aged in Chardonnay barrels. And the third one so is Grimshire. And she is resting comfortably in rye whiskey barrels. Oh, boy. We have some doubts about her. Is she being... No doubts. Comfy? No doubts. Oh. She's yeah. comfy. Yeah. She's chilling. Is that some... Maxing so and relaxing. Originally, we were talking about seeing that maybe in fall. Yeah. Is that still the case, you think? Or may not be this year. Okay. May not be this year. So let her sit a little bit more. Yeah. Let her relax. Yeah. Think about what she's doing. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because that is a great series. That's Absolutely a great, great series. series. Yeah, absolutely. Um and is there any of that left hiding around anywhere? Of Thread Spinner and Grand Allowance? Mm-hmm. Uh I think Thread Spinner's gonna be pretty hard to find. Yeah. Uh Grand Allowance you might find at um you know your bigger, bigger stores like Total Wine, Specs, okay. um, places like that. Um, I think most of the smaller independently owned ones are probably Everybody's sold run out. out of it. Yeah, yep. I think I hoarded a bunch for myself. Sorry, guys. It is the good. Sorry. <laughs> and these beers, these beers are only getting better. I mean, these are 12, 13, 14 percent beers. Oh yeah, they're and gonna sit forever. They will be just fine. Hanging out, waiting for number three to arrive. <laughs> nice. It'll be just that's, fine. See, and that's where the fun would be. Yeah. Like, let's sit down and start doing verticals. Absolutely. Let's, let's sit with all the sisters. Absolutely. That is awesome. Absolutely. That is absolutely. And the Legendary Series has been absolutely fantastic. It's from been the fun. Beginning. It's been fun. We've yeah. done a lot of we've done done a lot of really, really cool beers uh, and beers that, um, you know, really speak to my background and my heritage and and. You know, then completely it, on the other side of things, yeah. just going, you know. Your background and heritage. Go. Born in Belgium. Mm-hmm. Moved here when I was seven. Mm-hmm. Went to Mansfield High School. Mm-hmm. Went to SMU. Graduated SMU. Worked in advertising for 10 years. Started a brewery. 
Cool. We're caught up now. You got okay. Now we're yeah, we're good. good. All right. Yeah. So uh, some of this stuff, like yeah. with Bravos, La Dame yeah. du La, Bravo, La Dame, um, Antigone, yeah, um, Saint Dymphna, mm. in particular. Um, yeah. See, I've got my hoard of all of these bottles. I've been collecting multiples, yeah. just keeping that series going. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're on. I think Grimshire is. 12 or 13? Golly, man. Yeah. In five years. These are just one-offs never again. Never again. Yeah. So that nope. that's something to be said. If yep. you see a bottle that says Lakewood, legendary, just buy it. Just You're buy it. never going to see it again. Yep. Yeah. It's been an absolutely fantastic series. Yeah, it's been fun to do. Has it? It has. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, you know, we brew... When you, when you have a beer like Temptress and a beer like Alcohol or Lakewood Lager, I mean, those are three big sellers. So mm-hmm. we, we brew a lot of that. And just Right. <laughs> and it's just multiple times a week we're brewing that. Yeah. Um, so it's fun. I mean, the, the whole reason that me and all the guys and girls that I work with got into craft brewing is because it's it's fun and creative and it's, it's new and exciting, right? Mm-hmm. So you don't want to just be brewing the same beer day in, day out. Nothing wrong with that. There's there's something there's also something very nice to be said about making that beer that you brew every single day better every single time. Right on. Right. Right on. But we also want to be creative and innovative and push the envelope and you want to play and make something new and play. Yeah. And have fun. So yeah. So that's where legendary and comes in. That's where seduction comes in. You know. We have a we have a lot of fun and then especially for. For the big events that we have at the brewery, like our anniversary, or especially Let's Get Weird, we're doing, you know, a barrel or a keg of something new and fun and exciting. So if you want to find the super rare stuff. The super, super rare get stuff. Get to these big parties. Get to the brewery. Yes. Or, just, or just come to the tap room. Oh, see, there you go. Yeah. Problem solved. Seven Problem days a week. Solved. And then we can drink the wonderful goodness. Well, yeah, when we haven't, when hey, we haven't finished it all yourself. off. I know. I'm sorry. I haven't done it so far today. Why would I start now? <laughs> <laughs> man, Wim, thank you for coming in on this, man. Yeah. I need to go get another beer. You want to go get another beer? I'll get another beer. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to finish this beer. one first. Okay, you finish that one. Yeah. Get another one. Okay, shameless plug. Yeah. Shameless plug. Go. Tap rooms open seven days a week. Boom. Um, Where? Lakewoodbrewing.com. We are in Garland. Oh. Um, don't be scared. It's not what you've heard. <laughs> <laughs> what have we heard? Have we I've been down there plenty of times. What's There's the zombie issue? movies that start in Garland. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, fair enough. <laughs> no, it's 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 great. Uh, we have um, it's we're family friendly. We're dog friendly outside on our giant, uh-huh. giant, giant Massive beer area. garden. Um, open seven days a week. Karaoke on Tuesdays. Uh, live music. Oh, on I just found Thursdays. out about that. Okay, Tri- sorry. Trivia on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Free tours on Saturdays at one, three, and five. Lakewoodbrewing.com.com.com. Dot com, dot com. Who wants to go to Who wants to go to karaoke with me? Like, what? Say that again. It's sherryoke, actually. Wait, what? It's sherryoke. Why? Because we have a uh, drag sherryoke impersonator um, as our DJ. Done. We're doing this. We are doing this, guys. Yes. It is the fun. All right. So we'll just get a bus and bring it down. Yes. This will be awesome. Yeah. We bring the musical talent from Den. We're going to blow Garland out of the water. We're going to show you people bring what it's it. like. Bring <laughs> it. Bring it. You saw my list. Oh, yeah. It was pretty good. It was mm. It was a pretty daunting list mm. of musicals. Yeah. Mm. Songs. Make it musicals. happen. It's not like show tunes or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it can be. Awesome, man. <laughs> All right. We're going to come down and play. We're going to do some drinking. Awesome. Do some uh, singing, maybe. Let's do it. Yeah. We'll see you at the brewery. Guys, thank you for Cheers. joining us. Uh, oh, tonight, yeah, we tapped in, um, again, Coconut Temptress, yep. uh, Bourbon Barrel Aged, um, French Quarter, yep, and Lion Share, yep. which is actually brewed in Scotch and Bourbon Barrel. Scotch and Bourbon. That's right. Uh, we're going to be drinking that tonight until the place closes at midnight. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, come drink with us. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> see ya. Well, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out DentonRadio.com for new Denton artists and where they're playing next. While you're surfing the Internet, make sure you check out our friends Classic of Denton at ClassicofDenton.com.